Hello, this is Coding Atlas, and today we're gonna learn about the base project structure, primitive data types, variables, input and output. Firstly, let me show you how to create a project in Visual Studio. Firstly, press create a new project. Then here you choose the console app. Make sure it says C-sharp here and not another programming language. Press next. Choose a project name. Press next and continue. Initially, you'll have this file generated with a single line of code. That's a new feature of .NET. However, it is almost always a good practice to use OOP structure for your code. If you never heard of OOP, don't get worried yet. We'll learn this in the future, so you don't need to worry about this right now. Just follow the lessons and it will become clear later. This is the structure of your code. You can write it down yourself or copy it from the description below. Change the namespace to the name of your project. So instead of tutorial, you write the name of your project, how you named it. Leave the class name as program. And this is the main method. All the code is being executed from the main method. This is the entry point of your program. Between these curly braces, everything you write between them is being executed consequently. For example, we have one command over here, one instruction, console.writeLine. What does it mean? It means there is a class console, which is included in C-sharp, and it has the method called writeLine. Method writeLine has a parameter of type string with the text which you want to print. So, here we pass hello world string into writeLine. Make sure you write hello world with double quotation mark. Not singular, but double. We will go deeper into the classes and methods later, but now you just need to understand that writeLine is an instruction which is a part of console, that's why it's called a method. If it was a standalone instruction without any class, we would call it a function. But basically it's the same thing. Every single instruction needs to end with a semicolon. Also, what is a string? String is the data type which holds text. So when we write double quotation mark and some text inside, this is a string. We can't write it like normally as an instruction because this is not an instruction but we can pass it into another function or method. For example, in right line, here, you can pass any string you would like. For example, let's pass something else, not hello world. For example, hello coding atlas. Now let's run the program. As you see, we have hello atlas, coding atlas in our terminal. By the way, double slash is a notation for code comments. They don't get executed by the compiler, but they exist for the comfort of the programmer, to make the programming more clear. It is considered a good practice to use comments in your code for explaining stuff. For example, here, it's not really necessary because the program is very simple, but we can write a comment. This line prints hello coding atlas. You can see that here it is obvious what it does, so here the comment is not really necessary. But in big projects, when you have big functions, you can describe the functionality of your program. Also, you can write multiple line comments like this. You start with a slash star, you end it with a star slash, and in between you can write whatever you want. And it won't be executed by the compiler. Now what if you want to store some data? For example, you want to store user's name, and then write to the screen, hello, name. That's what variables are for. But before we will start working with them, I want to cover data types. This is the list of the primitive data types. In stores a number, a whole number, it can be negative. Long stars a very large whole number also can be negative. Float and double store floating values, they both can be negative. Double is double precision from float. Also there is bool. Bool stores either true or false. This makes sense if you want to have a value which is true or false, like binary value. There is also char and string. Char is one single character. You put it in the single quotes. String, you put in double quotes, and it's a whole sequences of characters. So it's a line of text, you can say. Now let's create some variables. How you do that? Firstly, you specify the type, for example, int. Then you give it a name. You can name it however you want. It won't have any impact on functionality, but it needs to be clear for you what it means and what it is used for. And also there is quite some rules for it. 
you can start it with a digit firstly and secondly you can use only digits letters and underscore signs for the name of the variable so for example let's name it sum variable one that's a valid name it doesn't have any purpose so we name it like this then you can give it a value if you want or you can skip this step and just close it with a semicolon if you want to give it a value you write is equals to let's say two okay let's create a float variable sum float equals to 3.14 let's say and if you create a float variable you need to finish it with f in the end if you create a double variable the f is unnecessary it's because float values they are shorter than double values so you need to specify that this number is specifically a float not a double but if you have a double you write it like this this is some double in our case and you use point not comma this is also very important then we have bool let's call it mm, is user registered equals to false so this one let me give you an example why we use bool here it is false and let's say the user registers on our website or application doesn't matter we set is user registered equal to true and we store it there so it can be either true or false this is a chart where we store a this is a string where we store alex so now how do we use them we can do two things with it read and write from it if you want to write to a variable you put the name of the variable first for example you want to rewrite the char some char then we set the new value equals to let's say b now some char is equal to b then we can do for example some double equals to 4.9 also we'll change its value now let's do some interesting stuff with the variables and actually use them we'll create a variable called name now a new function read line what it does it requires the user to input a line of text in the console in the terminal and then it returns it what does it mean it returns it some functions and methods can return some value it means the method can be used as the value so look at this name equals to console point read line console dot read line now look it will read the line and then this method will return us a value and this value we put inside of the name so whatever we write in the console will go into the name now let's use it and write console dot write line hello name now look at this what we do here we add two strings first string is hello second string is name it is not equal to this name this will just say hello name but if you write name like this it takes the variable and gets the value from the variable and put it inside of the write line what we do here is called concatenating when you add two strings with plus they add together that's the operation of concatenation you concatenate two strings so we just add them now let's run the program and see the result here we see hello coding atlas because we call it as the first line then it requires to write something let's write alex enter we see hello alex very nice now let's say we have two variables int a equals to 5 int b if we write b equals to a it means the value from a will be copied and put it inside of the b so we'll have 5 and b and this will be two separate values and if i modify b later a will stay the same but b will modify 
This is very important. It's that's how it works for primitive data types, but for some other types, it doesn't work like this. We can also do some arithmetical operations. This is the list of operations which you can do between numbers. So, you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, module, also increment and decrement in two different ways. So sum is basically adding two numbers, then you can subtract two numbers, you can multiply two numbers, divide two numbers. This returns the division rest. For example, if you divide 5 by 2, you get 2.5, so you get 1 as a rest. It's like 1 over 2. Here, increment and decrement, add 1 to the number, or subtract 1 from the number. Difference between these two is when you pass it into a function or a method, if you pass it like this, you will firstly print the value, like use the value, not only print, and only then you'll do the operations with it. If you do it like this, you will do the operation first, and then you will. Uh, pass the value into the function. For example, we demonstrate this. I'm gonna write console.write line plus plus a where a equals to zero. And I'm gonna remove all the previous code just to make it cleaner. Now if you run this, you'll have one as a result. But if you write a++, you're gonna have 0 as the result, because it firstly gives the a into right line, and a is 0, and only then it increments, it adds 1 to this. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna write it one more time, but without any change. Now look at this. Firstly, you get 0, because it goes into the function, and then it increments after it's being printed. Then we just print it, and it's 1. This is basically the difference between increment before the variable and after the variable. It's not so big, but you just need to be aware of this. Usually, this form is used the most. By the way, we are passing a non-string value into the right line. It means the function knows how to convert our integer into the string because normally it accepts only strings and when we do this or when we do for example text plus a plus plus what it does it transforms a into a string and passes this to the right line so we print it and there is no problem with it now let's create a simple project simple calculator we'll have two variables a and b and now let's try to get them from the user input. So let's analyze this code. What we have here, you can already observe that we have int.parse. Parse is a method of int class. You know int is basically integer data structure. So what we do? Parse converts any string into the integer, if it is possible. Why we do that? Because readline, it doesn't know where we pass the value we should generate. Normally it generates only a string, and we can't pass a string into an integer because it's illegal. It gives an error. If we do it without the parse, we'll have an error. Because we write something, even if it's a number, it processes it as a string. So what we do, we convert the string into an integer, and we pass it inside of A. And now observe, console point readline is a part of parse method, is inside of it. Why? Because this thing returns a value, returns a string. So we use the method as the value itself. And it goes inside of the parse. It's like same as we wrote, for example, string of 54. This would work. But we want the value to be dynamic and to come from the user input, so we write this. So this is a parameter of the parse parse gets a string as a parameter. Then we have a, we have b, we do the sum, and we print it in the, on the console. Let's see if it works. We get 60. It works. 4 plus 56 is 60. 
That's all for today. If you like this tutorial, please support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. If you have any problem or question, you're welcome into the comment section. I'll try to answer everyone. Have a nice day. Goodbye.